Howdy. Welcome to Wild West Faces. Up until now, you've heard quite a few stories of fights between cowboys and Indians or between gunfighters, but not all the struggles of the West involved human contact. Sometimes it involved four-legged creatures as well. The following story is just one such occasion where an elusive wolf was taking a lot of the rancher's herds. They wanted something done about it. Listen to this exciting story of a wolf called Three Toes. When we think about the Old West, our minds oftentimes turn immediately to thinking about the living legends back then, Wild Bill Hickok and Wyatt Earp and many others, men and women, who walked right out of the Old West and straight into the history books. But not all West legends walked on two legs. Some walked on four. Let me explain. For over a decade, a killer known as Three Toes roamed the badlands of Montana and North Dakota. He was raiding ranches and herds, leaving death in his wake. A $500 dead or alive bounty ended up being placed on the head of Three Toes, and this desperado was one of the last of his kind. He was a Great Plains wolf. Three Toes' infamy had become known far and wide and earned him legendary status due to his ability to evade capture or death while waging economic warfare on ranchers and anybody with domestic animals. He roamed over a wide territory, killing sheep, calves, hogs, colts, cattle, and horses. He killed for killing's sake, usually leaving his victims uneaten. His telltale three-toed tracks would inevitably be found at the scene. Now, nearly every professional wolf hunter of the Northwest had tried to capture him, but failed. First noticed in 1909, Charlie Wilson and Bill Foreman were riding along when they saw a wolf limping toward them. The wolf stopped at a distance and lifted a bloody front paw like a dog asking for help. Well, when Wilson pulled a rifle out of his scabbard, the wolf jumped into a ravine and vanished. About the same time, E. Avala, a nearby rancher, found the severed toes of a wolf in one of his traps. After this, three toes couldn't be trapped or poisoned, as he was far too wary of humans and as cunning as any wolf that ever lived. It's estimated at that time that three toes had cost ranch owners and stockmen over $50,000 in lost stock. He was pursued by over 150 men at times. It was even said that coyotes would follow Three Toes just to feed off his kills as he would leave them untouched and move on to his next victim. One rancher lost over 40 sheep in just two nights. Bounty hunting trackers could read his signs easily. The telltale three-toed paw print combined with the mass slaughter of uneaten animals. All the hunters needed to do was follow the river of blood. The trouble was the old wolf was no easier to catch when cornered as he was a mile away. Many in the pursuit of the wily old wolf told of three toes jumping over vast distances to escape capture. Others have seen him jump up sheer cliffs seven to eight feet tall. Some ranchers had wondered if maybe even he had once been a pup in captivity or perhaps had escaped from a sled team in the Northland. When hard-pressed by pursuers, Three Toes used tactics like circling back around, backtracking and leaping over soft ground or snow that would leave a sign of his passing. He was even seen to trot through a ranch yard like a dog as he tried to evade suspicion. One time, hunters ran Three Toes for around a hundred miles without getting a shot at him. Another time, a hunter used several horses in relays on the chase without results. The wolf actually stopped to kill 15 sheep in a corral while the chase was in progress. John Martin, a state hunter, spent months on his trail using traps, rifle, poison, and chasing methods. In 1924, he ran the wolf for three days, covering 200 miles of trail, and came close to capturing him. Three Toes was so exhausted, he fell many times, and Martin thought he had him. Then as he closed in, the wolf would rise again and trot off, looking for a means of escape. 
Three Toes eventually made it to the ice on the Grand River, and leaving no trail to follow, he disappeared. The U.S. Department of Agriculture sent an inspector to catch the killer, Clyde Briggs. He had hunted rogue wolves all over the Northeast. He knew all the tricks needed to catch the beast. Well, Clyde arrived in Harding County, South Dakota, and immediately he and his two assistants went to the location of where Three Toes had last been seen. For three weeks, they tracked their elusive quarry, laying traps and setting poison. Early one morning, they came up upon a wolf in one of the traps they had set, and it was Three Toes. He had been caught by the placing of natural wolf scent on a sage bush. One trap was set next to the bush and staked in the ground. Another was put five feet away and staked. As Three Toes approached, cautiously sniffing the bush, the trap sprang shut on his front paw. Then as he fought desperately to free himself while he circled the trap, pulling on his paw, the other trap snapped shut on his hind leg paw. He was done. He fought the traps to the point of exhaustion, and he lay there, quiet and still, as the men approached. His eyes darted about and followed the men's movements, but the hours and hours of fighting for his life had made him docile, a pitiful end for the famous killer. The inspector intended to bring the gray beast in alive and roped the wolf and bound his jaws. On the trip back to town, one of the men noticed that three toes had stopped breathing and his eyes had glazed over. The legend was dead. He was thought to be around 20 years old and over six feet in length. He was down on weight and condition with his advanced age and weighed in around 80 pounds. Just one year later, in 1926, Three Toes species, the Great Plains Wolf, or the Buffalo Wolf, was declared extinct. A memorial stands in Buffalo, South Dakota to Three Toes, and his skull resides in the Smithsonian Institute. <laughs>